For example two, what I want us to be able to do is find a formula for the truncation error if we use the fourth order Taylor polynomial to approximate one over one minus three x on the open interval negative one third to one third. All right, so the truncation error, okay, so we, we want to know the error if we're using a fourth order Taylor polynomial to approximate this function, okay? So this is my f of x, all right? So let's write f of x, and it's equal to one over one minus three x. All right, so we should be recognizing this, okay? We recognize this because this comes from the geometric series formula, right? And our first term is one, and remember it's a sub one over one minus r, right? So our r is three x. This is a power series, okay? Starting with the first term being one. So this is equal to one plus three x, and I'm just gonna put three x in parentheses. Okay, and then I, and then because I took this and I'm, my multiplier, my r is three x, so I'm going to multiply it by three x each time. So three x times three x would give me the next term, and that would be plus three x squared, and then multiply that one by three x, and that would be three x cubed. Multiply that one by three x, and that would be three x to the fourth, and that would be my fourth order Taylor polynomial, right? Okay, so then plus, and then 3x to the fifth. I'm gonna do several more of these. And then plus 3x to the sixth, plus 3x to the seventh, plus 3x to the eighth, plus dot, 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 plus 3x to the n plus dot 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 right and we would continue okay all right so this would equal okay the function okay so if we go forever if we go forever this function and the taylor series are the same between negative one-third and one-third okay so this becomes one plus 3x plus 9x squared plus 27x cubed um, plus 81x to the fourth plus, and then dot, 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 right? It's going to be all the rest of these, okay? All right? So this, um, this is our, this is going to be from here over is going to be our truncation error. All right, so our fourth order Taylor polynomial, so p sub four of x would equal one plus three x plus nine x squared plus 27 x cubed plus 81 x to the fourth. Okay, our truncation error, which is r sub four of x would equal three x to the fifth plus three x to the sixth plus three x to the seventh plus dot 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 all the rest of them right all the rest of them would be this error okay all right now how can we want to come up with a formula for this right what is a formula for this truncation error so something you have to realize is this was a geometric series right so if we stop it at some point and do the rest of the terms the rest of these this is also a geometric series it's just the first term is this one right here instead of being the one right okay so what what is our r what are we multiplying? To go from this one to this one, we multiply by 3x. To go from this one to the next one, we multiply by 3x. To go to the next one, multiply by 3x. 
door, R is still 3x. It's just this is going to be our first term, okay? Now, this is really helpful if it's a geometric series like this, okay? Or a power series like this, okay? So, what's the formula? Well, our R sub 4 of x would equal the first term, right? Which is this 3x to the fifth. over 1 minus 3x, 1 minus r, right? Because our r is 3x. Okay, so clean this up a little bit. Our truncation formula, r sub 4 of x is equal to, okay, so 3 to the 5th, x to the 5th, 3 to the 5th is 243, x to the 5th over 1 minus 3x. Okay, and that's our truncation error, okay? Now, I wanna show you something else, okay? All right, and I'm gonna slide, the, slide it up a little bit. Okay, so we know, we know that f of um, x is equal to one over one minus 3x, okay? So we're gonna put a number in here um, between negative one-third and one-third. You know what, and I should have said this, okay? Um, why is it converging? Let me slide it back. Why, why the negative one-third to one-third, okay? That has to do with the interval of convergence, right? And for this to converge, right, for these to be the same, the Taylor polynomial, okay, and this is, remember our r, r, absolute value of r, has to be less than one. Well, what's our, what's our r, our little r here, our, our multiplier? It's this 3x, right? So the absolute value of 3x has to be less than one, which means negative one is less than 3x is less than one. And that's where we get the negative one third is less than x is less than one third. Okay, and I slide that up, okay? So that's where, the that's where the negative one third, and this can be written as negative one third to one third. Okay, so we can calculate our error by knowing this, um, this truncation error formula, okay? Now, I wanna look at a value. A value between negative one third and one, uh, negative one third and one third would be something like 0 0.2, okay? 0.2 is within this interval, all right? So if we do f of 0.2, what I wanted to show you, if we do f of 0.2, okay, that'd be one over one minus three times 0.2, okay, and that'd be one over one minus 0.6. This is the actual value of the function at 0.2. Okay, and then this would give you, um, this would be 0 0.4, so one over 0 0.4. Okay, and then that would give you um, 10 over four. Let's put that into a calculator and see what we get. Okay, and when you put one divided by 0 0.4, that's 2.4. Five. Okay, so that's the actual function value, okay? What's the Taylor approximation for this, okay? So f of 0 0.2 can be approximated using this Taylor polynomial, okay? So it'd be 1 plus 3 times 0 0.2 plus 9 times 0 0.2 squared and then plus 27 times 0 0.2 cubed, and then plus 81 times 0 0.2 to the fourth, okay? And let's see, that's, okay, so this is the Taylor polynomial of order four that we're using to approximate f of 0 0.2, and that's what, you have to put this little um, um, approximation symbol, okay? So I'm gonna put this into my calculator. All right, and see what that comes out to be. Um, actually, yeah, no, I'll just go ahead and put it. In. Okay, so putting this into the calculator, I wind up with a value of 
zero, five, six, which is different than the actual value, right? It's a little bit off and it should be because it, it's only the same if we were able to go forever, right? So the, the question is like, how far do you have to go to get within a certain tolerance? That's the whole point of this, okay? All right, so our remainder, okay, this could also be, um, you could write this as P sub four of 0 0.2, okay? Um, our remainder, our truncation error for this would be R sub four of 0 0.2. Okay, and you're gonna see it's the difference between these two. Okay, so this is gonna be 243, I'm just using my formula that I have up here, okay? 243 times 0 0.2 raised to the fifth over one minus three times 0 0.2, and let's put that in our calculator, so 243 times 0 0.2 raised to the fifth over one minus three times 0 0.2. And we get 0 0.1944. So if you take that and add it to the 2.3056, you're gonna get the 2.5, okay? So that's how much we're off by, right? So I'm gonna add 2.3056 and we get exactly 2.5. And that makes, it should make sense to you because this is the approximation, this is the Taylor approximation for this value. And this R sub four takes into account all the rest of the terms, right? So if this is 2.5, it should be the difference between these. Okay? From the first page that we were talking about, you know, f of x, f of x, it sh this should make sense because f of x has to equal let me slide it up. Okay, so f of x has to equal your Taylor polynomial of order n plus any remainder r sub n of x, okay? All right, so basically what we did is f of 0 0.2 is equal to the fourth order Taylor polynomial at 0 0.2 plus the truncation for the fourth order Taylor polynomial at 0 0.2. Okay, all right. And that's example two, guys. Okay, so turning to the next page, we're gonna talk about this um, Taylor's theorem with the remainder, okay? All right, um, I don't wanna read it yet because I, I want you to understand this a little bit better first, okay? So if we have an f of x, a function, right, some function, this would be the Taylor polynomial of order n, right? Okay, and it would be centered at some value a, right? Um, so this right here, r n of x, is all the rest of the terms that we need, okay, to um, add to the Taylor polynomial, polynomial of order n to make it be exactly the function, okay? right? So this is it, like for the last problem, it was a geometric series, right? So this was a geometric series that stopped. And then the remaining part was also a geometric series, which allowed us to find this, right? It, it, because this was itself a geometric series, just a different first term than the original part, okay? All right. So then it says, okay, our, this is the remainder, okay? Then it says this, where r sub n of x is the n plus one derivative. Okay, so we need, we're, we're coming up with a formula that would tell us what the remainder is, something that's not a geometric um, uh, series, okay? So this is the n plus one derivative, all right, at c. Now that's not a typo, okay? It's at c, all right? And we don't know what c is yet. That's why I'm, I'm holding off and I'm gonna try to explain what the c is, okay? Over n plus one factorial, well that makes sense, right? And then x minus a, yeah, it's centered at a, right? n plus one, raised to n plus one power, okay? All right, so here we go. Where is this c, okay? So if a function f is differentiable through order n plus one in an interval i containing a, remember the, the polynomial is centered at, or the Taylor polynomial is centered at x equals a, then for each x in, the, in i, which is the interval, each x in the interval, 
there exists a C between X and A such that, okay, so let's, let's take a look at it like a number line, okay? So if we have a number line, right here's where I'm centering, that's where I want the convergence to happen at the center, okay? At A, okay? Then that means that there's, that there's an interval I containing A. So I'm gonna just put parentheses to show the interval. Okay, this is the interval, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna write this. This would be our interval I that we're talking about, and it contains A, okay? Then for each X in I, so for each of these X's in the interval, okay, there exists a C between X and A. Okay, so X, X is, um, X is the value we're trying to um, approximate using the Taylor polynomial to approximate, okay? So let's say right here is our X. Okay, then what this is telling me that is that this C right here that we put into the n plus one derivative must be somewhere between X and A. So there's a C value right in here that we could put into the n plus one derivative and it would give us the remainder, okay? Now, X could also, we could pick an X in this interval that's over on this side. Right? Okay, now that would be a different C, but the C would still be between X and A. So we can't write, really write this with symbols. Okay, so it has to be just in between the X and A. Okay? All right, so if this is where we're centering our Taylor polynomial on, okay, and this is the X value that we're trying to approximate the function for, then there's a C in between here, where if you put that into the n plus one derivative, you would get the remainder. You would get this truncated part of the Taylor polynomial, okay? All right, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's do it, I'm gonna do a little bit with numbers here, okay? Let's say we center this at two, okay? So our a would be two. And our interval of convergence would be um, zero to four. So let's say this is zero and this is four, right? Okay, so our center where, we're, where our center would be is at two. All right, and let's say we're trying to estimate um, 2.5, okay? So that would be our X. So let's say we're trying to do an X at 2.5, okay? Then what this tells us, this theor theorem, okay, what this theorem tells us is there's got to be a value right in here, okay, a C value. Now, we don't know where that is, but I know it's where, I know a range in, what it's, in where it's located. It's located between 2 and 2.5, and there must be a value that I put in the n plus 1 derivative, okay, and make that my numerator, and do n plus one factorial and x minus a and what you know here the x right here would be 2.5 minus 2 raised to the n plus one power okay that would give us this remainder now here's the kicker it's almost impossible to find the c because you'd have to know what the remainder is to find the c you could get the n plus one derivative because we have to get the derivatives up here but this is almost impossible to do unless you have something like what we just had, the geometric series, okay? You can do it then, all right? But this is virtually impossible. It does exist, that's all this is for. It, it exists, okay? So there's gonna be another way that we kind of, um, we're, we estimate the error, okay? And that's what this next thing is, and it's the remainder estimation theorem, or some people call it the Grange error bound, okay? All right, so we'll talk about that now. All right, so now for this remainder estimation theorem, the Lagrange error bound, okay? So we know the error is the absolute value of R sub n of x. This is the truncated part of our Taylor polynomial of order n, okay? And now from this previous theorem, we know that, that this remainder 
and this have to be the same, but we'd have to find the C. But I just said it was virtually impossible, right? To find the, C, the exact C value where this would be true, okay? So what if instead of finding the exact value, instead we use the maximum of, of the derivative, okay? So that's what this is gonna be. If we use the maximum of the derivative at some value C, okay, and we find this maximum, well, this one would have to be less than this one, okay? And it's gonna be easier to find the maximum value, okay, for this, for this derivative at C, okay? And um, since all of the, since this is absolute values around this, okay, you can rewrite this so this is the absolute value, this one's an absolute value, you wouldn't need absolute value on n plus one factorial because n plus one factorial will already be positive, okay? So we're gonna use this. I know it's, 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 this is very, very, very technical mathematics, okay? And I know it seems like it's like, wow, this is really, really hard, okay? It's actually easier than it looks, okay? And, and it will make more sense once we do a couple problems. And that's why this lesson is really long. There's a lot of technical issues that we're talking about and, um, it's just gonna be, I just know this video is gonna be like the longest ever, okay? So I get that, all right? I understand it, just hang in there, okay? Hang in there with me, okay?